Well, well, well. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, all you lovely folks joining me here nice and early over at Howling Minds. It's nice to see you, and to see you, it is very, very nice. I do hope you're doing very well today. Thank you for stopping by and saying hello, checking out what we're up to. Hey, Mubs, how you doing, buddy? Hopefully you're doing well today. Thanks for stopping in and saying hello. Merry, Merry Christmas indeed. Happy holidays to you. Hopefully you're having a lovely time. Uh, looking forward to just jamming some casual magic tonight. Very much in the mood to, at work, oh, oh, well, hopefully not for too much longer, one way or the other. Um... Yeah, looking forward to jamming some casual magic tonight, having a good time, just uh, taking it easy, having some fun, playing some of our favourite cards, and of course the easiest way for us to do that is to start things off with a little bit of cube. They've uh, done the right thing, extent till 7am, rather you than me buddy, rather you than me. Uh, they've extended the uh, the arena cube out longer over the Christmas period, and then lord knows I'm going to make the most of that, because cube... Love me a good bit of cube, so we're gonna gonna have some fun with that, and maybe play a little bit on the ladder a bit later on with uh, with some of our favourite stuff. Just have an all round nice night, uh, take it easy, heading into into the Christmas day itself. So let's uh, let's get ready to hop on over into the arena client, and uh, start drafting some cube, shall we? One way or the other. Oh, Kidoki Arena, thank you very very much. So as always, then gonna hop on over into the traditional arena cube area. If you're not familiar with this cube by now, well, I, I guess the main question is, where have you been? It's uh, kind of been everywhere, has been around for a fair while now. A uh, selection of the best cards available on MTG Arena for you to draft as a custom draft format in a phantom environment. Thanks very much, Mubs. I thought it'd be a nice touch to uh, christmas up for the stream a little bit. So it's just a, a nice little touch to, uh, to tie things together. Appreciate the fact you like it. Uh, so yeah, going to spend 600 gems on this draft. Hop on in and get cooking with some cube. Just hoping that uh, everything holds up because obviously it's extra stuff going on. We are ready. Gotta keep an eye on my settings. You drafted Gruel twice? Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> C8, letting us down. Come on, C8. Six mana Chandra got past four mana Chandra. That seems kind of obnoxious, I'll be honest. Four mana Chandra is like one of the better cards in the cube, so getting past that is, is kind of disgusting. Did this bug out on me? Waiting for others at zero seconds. Apparently, no, okay, rebuilding the queue, just... Was trying its best to get that person in and and failed to do so. Never mind. Try that again. See if we can't get a little cube underway. All right, sweet. Um, kind of drawn immediately to Marari's wake here. It is an awfully powerful effect for a lot of the decks that we quite enjoy drafting, the big, dirtily dumb things. Um, Knight of the Ebon Legion is flying for black, but you don't want to be picking it early. Conclave Mentor would be a heck of a push towards an archetype as well, and is not quite as powerful as something like Marari's Wake. Um, Banishing Light's the safe pick, the whole, like, I don't know what colour combination I want to be in yet, so I'll just take the good removal. Same as things like Rogrin Triome. As, uh, as like solid lands, but I think Marari's Wake's pretty high upside, and there's a lot of good decks that can utilize this card. Mana doublers are just kind of busted, so uh, so I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. And then when you take Marari's Wake, it's kind of hard to not take Sphinx's Revelation. I'll be honest. Um, other picks in this pack, like I feel sorry for whoever doesn't get to play Mono Black Devotion. Because uh, two of the best cards for that deck are in this pack. There's nothing else really standing out to me here, to be honest. So, I'm going to take this rev and we're going to see if we can be uh, a big mana deck. Let's let's try and juice ourselves to, to big mana. Alright, well that leaves us with some options as well, right? We can either take Jade Light Ranger, try and shore things up nice and early. Or we can just take Approach and keep taking big... Bant-coloured payoffs. 
think I like Approach more than Jade Light Ranger. This is just very replaceable. This is a very unique effect. Gonna need to find some early acceleration sooner rather than later, but... That's a start, at least. Bear with me two seconds, folks. Just got to keep half an eye on, on my settings for the start of the day, at the very least, just to make sure that uh, running the snow isn't going to blow me into the ground. Um, so this is unique. I could take Gilded Goose here, or I could just take Indiatha Triome as like a... Dual land for green white, uh, potentially have the ability to splash black if that's something that we become interested in for some reason. Um, I think honestly, like Goose is just the safer pick, so I'm likely just doing that. Okay. Uh, so this is interesting. I think Cast Out is just enough better than Beanstalk Giant that I am probably probably going with this. Like, Beanie's good for fixing, but like, Cast Out's very flexible. Cycling early, good removal. Yeah, I agree with you, Mubs, very much so. I think it's, I think it's just enough better. Uh, Once Upon a Time is a card that I really enjoy playing in these kind of decks. Helps you find your... Uh, your niche lands, like a unique lands, or uh, good creatures, kind of, kind of like it. You want to splash green? Maybe. Yeah, I can see it, see it being a world where we want to be like blue, base blue white, splashing green. But it might just be green white and not playing the Sphinx's Revelation. We'll have to wait and see. It's looking fairly reasonable as like just green white at the moment. To be fair. Hello, Mr. Deathrite Barman. Happy Christmas to you, too. Happy holidays, I should say. Hopefully you're having a good time. Should I know? I'm going to take the growth spiral here in case we end up in harder bant. It's obviously very, very good if we are in a bant ramp of some capacity. How are you today, buddy? Hopefully you're doing well. I was slept today, so a bit slow. Yeah, I'm okay, man. Just uh, gotta be honest. The the alone at Christmas thing is starting to set in and become a real thing, uh, you know, slowly. So that's getting to me a little bit. But otherwise, I'm doing okay. I'm having a good time. I'm gonna play some cube, have some fun. Uh, nothing in this pack seems particularly stellar. I think Ondo Inversion might be fine because it's probably just gonna be a land most of the time, and occasionally you'll cast it as a ridiculous spell. Um. We are looking like Salundi Visions might be okay, honestly. Don't think we're ever playing Song of Frey Elise or Conclave Mentor. So I'm going to take this on, on the hedge that it's in some way good enough. Guess that's the same like mythos for Kazandu Mammoth. Greetings Dark Force, how are you today? Nice to see you. No, I'm good, Barman. I'm just going to do my best to jam and have a good time and keep streaming and, and try and provide entertainment for other people. And hopefully that's uh, that's the way it goes. Happy holidays indeed. Hopefully you're having a lovely time. Thanks for stopping in today. Indeed, happy holidays all around. Happy holidays all around. Uh, ooh. I guess Wayward Swordtooth might be a card we're interested in if we end up with enough lands. This is a good, good reasonable start, but we need... Need some, some help in pack two and pack three to see where we end up. Oh no, I appreciate that, Barman. Thank you very much. It means a lot. Uh, okay, so we got some interesting choices here. Fairgrounds Warden is a pretty reasonably like solid removal spell. Uh, but we also have like Elder Gargaroth and Angel of Sanctions, which are both pretty damn good five drops, to be honest. Um... I think Angel is more flexible, but Gargaroth is like more powerful in like terms of raw stats and keywords and how much text is just kind of slapped on there for no reason. Um, so I'm leaning towards Gargaroth. We've got a, a number of three drops and stuff already. I think this is fine. I think I'm happy taking it early. 
would love to find a couple more mana dorks uh, in the two mana slot, really, to kind of shore things up a little bit. Uh, I don't think we can play Fauna Shaman, unfortunately. I think for me this is between Finale, which, to be honest, we're really spell heavy. So I don't think we can play Finale, or just Solemn Simulacrum, which I actually like quite a lot in a deck like this, especially if we end up being banned. So I think Solemn's nice, pretty happy to grab this. I like Mia Solemn. Yeah, I'm glad you agree. Bum, ba -dum, bum. So this is looking fairly promising. We really need a little more early acceleration and maybe some more X spells like Thassa's Intervention or, or similar. Uh, ooh, this is interesting. So Hinterland Harbour would be nice and Seagate Restoration would also be nice. There's a feeling, I get a feeling this might wheel. If this wheels, we should be okay. We'll be pretty happy to have it because we're probably not going to cast it very often. I think Explore is just good enough that I'm like definitely taking it, right? And this is the kind of like deck now that's going to want to play like 18, 19 lands to make sure these effects have lands to put into play and make our way towards, you know, some of the the chunky top end we got going on here. Wow. Don't think I can pass an Ugin the Spirit Dragon. I don't think Dryer Green Seeker is ever wheeling. You're excited? I'm gl I'm glad, Dark Force. I'm glad. Glad you're glad you're excited. Yeah, pretty sure this is this is an Ugin Ugin deck, if I've ever seen one make our way towards that. Um This pack not quite so good. Nothing really for us here, to be honest. Castle Garen Brig. What is Ugin doing there? Good question. Maybe no one's ramping up quite like we are. Garen Brick doesn't seem great when you're playing quite as few lands as we are. Uh, creatures, sorry, that we are. But I think it's better than anything else. So, I don't think we can cast History very easily looking at our deck right now. I also don't think it's very good in our deck either, so... I'm going to take this castle speculatively and see where we end up. Okay. Um, can't really use Primal Might, unfortunately. Glass Pool Mimic is another one of those cards that really does help in a deck like this because it's a land and a spell when you need it to be. There's not a ton of good targets for it though. So maybe not. I think I prefer it over like Angel of Invention or Basri Cat though. It makes the blue splash easier when some of your blue spells are just like lands as well. And we really do want a lot of lands in our Explore Growth Spiral deck so I think I'm leaning towards this Glass Pool Mimic. And try and take a couple of things moving forward that are good with this. Wow, this pack is absurd. I want Patient Rebuilding, Paradise Druid, Wilt, Castle Vantress, and kind of this Zagoth Triome as well. Oh, wow. I think Patient Rebuilding is probably just really obscene. But I don't think we can cast it consistently with our deck the way it's built. We don't have a lot of blue fixing right now. I think it's just Paradise Druid. But this could be very wrong. That pack was loaded with, with goodies. Pretty happy to pick up Scattered Groves here, though. This is good fixing. That pack was absolutely chocker. There's still a chance that we're not blue here, you see, because we're not actually playing very many good blue spells at the minute. So I don't want to take Rebuilding and then not be blue, uh, because that would be really disappointing when that pack was that, that loaded with stuff. Okay, got the dregs coming round now. I don't think we're likely to be playing any of these, but Fauna Shaman might be playable if we suddenly end up with tons of weird, powerful creatures in pack three. So, sure. So you get Restoration on the wheel is probably the pick here. Again, we probably don't ever get to cast this, but it's another one of those spell lands that plays very well in a deck like this. But again, good chance we're not. We're not blue, unless pack three changes that. 
I don't think we're playing any of these, to be honest. Maybe I should have taken the Fragmentize for the sideboard. I don't think Fauna could shoot her up lands, can it? I could be wrong. No, it's only creatures. Only creatures. It's definitely leaning towards not being blue at the moment. However, this Immortal Sun is bananas. How many Planeswalkers do I have? Not a lot. Only, only the Ugin. Pretty sure this is just a slam dunk. Um, like, Search for a Scanter on the wheel might be nice, but again, not necessarily blue. Scavenging is pretty good. Evolving Wild's pretty good. But this card is bananas. And I would like the Immortal Sun in my deck. Thank you very much. I don't think I'm passing Shark Typhoon here either. In my, my Mirari's Wake Mana Ramp deck. Pretty pretty sure this is this is absurd. Let's let's take a typhoon. I really would like to pick up a land or two that taps for blue. We're probably not playing the revelation at this point, but um, obviously these are these are lands, so it doesn't matter too much. But having having a, a blue land or two would probably help quite a lot. I would normally slam Sublime Epiphany here, but I'm pretty sure we can never cast it. So I think Scoot Swarm might very well be the pick. Scooty Boy is very good with uh, all these land drops. So, yeah, I think that's fine. Wow, Tender Shoot Dryad? Woof. This card is insane. I really would like that green white land to wheel. But I can't pass Tender Shoot Dryad. Card is. Very good. So at the minute, I don't think I'm playing Rev or Restoration. Not sure about these two. But we'll see. In short order. But I'm ba dum bum ba dum. This deck should be a lot of fun, I think. It's 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 big and flashy, but it's looking good. Just gotta work on where we're trimming. Wow, okay. So I could take Thassa's Intervention, but again, I'm pretty sure we can never cast it, unfortunately. Or I can just take this Glass Casket, which seems pretty reasonable to have some removal, of which we definitely don't have like any right now, so. Casket seems fine to me. I don't think we can really benefit from Lotus Field. We've not got any of the effects that make it better than just what it is by itself. What is Field of the Dead still doing here? Oh, I wish I could slam this. These are both absurd cards, by the way. Chromatic Orrery and Field of the Dead are both bananas. And the fact they're both in this pack is disgusting. I... I'm not missing out on anything by taking this, and I guess I can try and just pick lands, maybe, moving forward. It probably doesn't make the cut, but I'm not missing out on anything. Uh, I guess Lyra Dawnbringer might be good enough. I think Gargaroth and Tender Shoot are better 5 drops, but might make the cut in some matchups. Especially if we choose to just go green-white, which might happen here, to be honest. So I'm pretty sure I don't want this one. This deck's going to be sweet. Looking forward to this. Hallowed Fountain seems like a really nice one to pick up if we are going to play Shark Typhoon and Growth Spiral. Not sure it's enough, but we'll see.
Wow, overwhelming splendor's still here. I think there's a good chance we're just uh, just green white here, folks. Good, good chance we're just green white. I'll do the math on it in a minute, Mubs, and see whether it's worth it. Unlikely to play any of these. Never casting the Sphinx, so there's no point taking it. Sensor is potentially playable. Uh, happy to pick that up. Another dual land is huge. Wow, this deck turned out pretty damn good, I think. Maybe maybe missing a few mana dorks, but but pretty reasonable. So let's see, you're actually a land. So let's not count you in the top end. Yeah, I really could have done with another couple of early drops just to kind of smooth this over a little bit. Don't think we picked up enough blue lands to play blue, unfortunately. But I guess... I guess most of the cards we were considering playing are lands by themselves anyway. Um... Yeah, I don't think we're ever doing that, honestly, Mubs. But, uh... So I don't think Glass Ball Mimic is very good here. Does Solemnity Visions have enough hits? Like, let's flip this to the other mode for a second. Arena, please. I want to... Thank you. Um, no, nowhere close. Okay, that's not not a good sign. Yeah, it's not. it's just not worth it for just Shark Typhoon and Growth Spiral, I don't think. Which is the only things we really want. We might have to because we're short on playables otherwise. Yeah, I think round three might be good enough. We don't have that many bulky creatures. Kind of just thinking it through now. I guess Paradise Druid... Howard Fountain, Egg. I don't I don't think I want to... I think F Filigree Familiar is probably quite good here. Gains us some life, is a speed bump, draws us cards. I think it's very much like Solemn Simulacrum in making our way towards our top end. So I'm pretty sure that makes the cut. I think the Egg makes the cut too. And then it's just a case of... I'm live tomorrow, Zero. I'm live tomorrow. Nice to see you too, though. Fe we don't have enough lands to make field work, sadly, I don't think. Hey, you bells, thank you very much. Appreciate you stopping in and saying hello. Nice to see you. Hopefully you're having a lovely holiday period as well. I'm getting there, Zero. As I said to some of the guys earlier on, uh, the reality of spending Christmas alone is definitely starting to set in a little bit now. But uh, but I'm okay other than that. Just going to have some fun, jamming some cube, and hopefully providing some entertaining content for you guys. So we'll see see how we end up doing. Yeah, I, I'm kind of thinking it through, Mubs. Um, see whether there's any way I can sneak in. I guess Solemn can technically be a blue source too. So if I do like an island... Because we're a little short on playables otherwise, unfortunately. Yeah, we could play Field of Ruin. 
Fuel plays pretty well with Scoot Swarm and stuff as well. What does it look like if I do this? I guess uh, at the expense of this. And then I'm still on one. Oh, please stop popping up. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, sixteen lands? Am I, am I missing time? We definitely want another land in here. Yeah, I don't think any of them are very good, unfortunately, Mubs, is the problem. Like, some, most of them are pretty bad in our deck, which is, is a real shame. Um, we can never, ever cast the... Uh, so this is, hang on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, and a handful of spell lands, which is what we were after in the first place. So I think if I'm doing this, I want Shark Typhoon... And then I guess I need to play another spell land. Because I can't play Revelation. I can't really afford to play Grove Spiral. You only get instants and sorceries, which means you suck. What does Mimic Mimic? I guess it mimics... Paradise Druid. Wayward Swordtooth. Simulacrum, maybe. Ly uh, not Lyra. Uh, Tender Shoot Dryad. Elder Gargoth. Okay, this is probably fine. Let's try it looking like this, shall we? Let's uh, ramp it up, see if we can be green, green white ramp with a little bit of, uh, of blue mana to fill in playables. Well, we came up a little short. That's an interesting hand. Cube doesn't tend to be too fast. It's quite clunky, so... You did. You did, Zero. You saw both of those cards. Um, of course, my opponent will now lead on Isamaru when I keep a hand that doesn't have a play until turn three. I am good at magic. This sword is going to have to do some work, by the way. <laughs> No two drop. Come on, be be a be a bro. Oh, I should have been more. I should have clarified more. Yeah, don't get me wrong. We're gonna accelerate real quick. I'm just worried about dying. <laughs> so Reese can start making tokens this turn. Indeed, we have many, many payoffs in this deck, Zero. Many, many payoffs. It's it's our cube deck. I all, almost just realized I didn't start a prediction as well. So for those folks that like to predict on my match outcomes, you can do that now if you want. You even get a head start looking at this hand versus the opponent because I didn't start it early enough. I will not block this Isamaru. Wow, slamming on the points for for a win. Fragmentizes my food. That's not very nice. Sword tooth. Oh, that's that's awful. You should feel bad, Zero. You should feel bad. There's only a small wager against you right now, Mubs, so... We'll see. We'll see. That Elspeth is quite good here. I guess I can chump block with this goose, it's not doing anything. Alright, well, I know what the plan is now. I, I know what the plan is now. <laughs> Untap. Here's hoping, Barman. Here's hoping. I like to put them out there. Um, obviously, when we're quieter, people less people will play. But that's fine. 
Coco. Please don't hit an answer to Marari's wake. Okay, care about neither of those things. That is fine. I will take seven. And then I will cast this Ugin the Spirit Dragon. I would like to minus four. <laughs> Whoop. Golden egg, go. <laughs> oh, I even hit the land. Bonus. Eugene, man. Who thought printing this card was a good idea? <laughs> Conclave Mentor is fine. Let's, uh, let's gain a little bit of life here just to, to help us perk up a little. Okie dokie. Let's bolt this thing. Goodbye, Conclave Mentor. My opponent will gain two life for their troubles, and I will gain seven life for mine. And then I'll cast an Elder Gargaroth, because Marari's wake. Doubling mana. Fair and fine, folks. Nothing to worry about there. <laughs> uh, what can I say? Like, mana doublers, perfectly balanced. And a good inclusion when it comes to Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Hand's a little lopsided, but it's fine. Lyra Dawnbringer is probably pretty good in this matchup, so. I will draw the Immortal Sun. The game plan continues. Stay alive long enough to slam massive, ridiculous haymakers. It's a good plan. Let's see how it plays out for me, Con. Oh, I drew the wake again. I drew the wake again. Let's get back to that whole not dying part. Opponent's draw is good here. Conclave Mentor and Fledgling is, is a real pack-a-punch in a can. We're gonna need gonna need a little bit of help. Please have no more land drops. Thanks. What did I just say? Might be might be too slow this one. Need to find a good answer to this damn fledgling. I don't really want to have to cast wake and then blow up my own wake. That's not not how you want to, to do things. <laughs> I'll be honest. Jesus Christ, this thing getting too bigger every turn is terrifying. That is also terrifying. What am I even drawing towards? I don't, I don't know, but it ain't this. Like... Yeah, that's, that, that's not going to do it. Alright, opponent's got uh, more early firepower than I gave him credit for. Let's, let's try and keep a hand that is a little better against, uh, against two drops. This time around, shall we? Oh, 
Where have I put stuff? I can hear vibrating, but I don't know what's vibrating. Okay, that's that's more reasonable. Yeah, the mentor is what turned that away. It just meant that the, the fledgling was obscene and did silly, silly things. There's a chance I should have once upon a time for Gilded Goose, but that seems a bit narrow. I'm probably going to want to find like a Gargaroth or something. Sacred Cat. Modern, modern All-Star Sacred Cat. The Immortal Sun is a good one. Let's see what Once Upon a Time gets for us. Had to be careful to click the right one there. Ooh, is Swordtooth good here, or am I taking a 5-drop? I should probably just take one of the 5-drops, right? I think Gargaroth's better than Lyra, to be honest. But I could be wrong. Gargaroth into the Immortal Sun seems like a beating. Lotus Cobra might also be a beating, though, so we've got to be careful. Would love to draw a play this turn. That is, in fact, a play this turn. So we're going to do this and cast a 3-3 Mammoth. Okay, opponents accelerating themselves off Lotus Cobra here. So let's see see where this goes. Nowhere. It goes absolutely nowhere. Interesting. Here's an Elder Gargaroth. Five. This is looking much better. <laughs> Significantly better, in fact. We'll make a little bit of mana. Bring back the cat. And Coco. They have Fragment Eyes? I mean, that would suck, but it doesn't actually kill an Immortal Sun, so who cares? It's four or less. That, however, is a good company. That's that's a lot of, lot of pack for your punch. I'm not sure it's going to matter, but... Bonk. I'll make a 4-4. Four, four. In the business, that's what they call a combo. Hmm. <laughs> turn, uh, turn 4 Gargaroth, turn 5 Immortal Sun is, is quite good. Quite good. Ooh, Hand Execution is not a bad one here in fairness. They'll need to make some mana to use it. But it's certainly not a bad one. That is definitely enough mana to use it, right? No, they're one short. They're one short using it. Draw my additional card. That's <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> oh boy. Knock knock. Who's there? Everyone. Safe to say this was a pretty good mulligan to six. Pretty, pretty good six. <laughs> Here's where I get like undo inversion or something, and I'm just like, everyone. Oh man. Oh, wow. 
Is it safe to say we did the thing, chat? Is it safe to say we did the thing? Opponent can exile my Gargaroth. I don't think I care. Crunch. <laughs> Good game, opponent. Match one going to, to green, white, splash, blue ramp. That was that was incredibly fun. And you know what us winning matches means? It means we give away some free boosties. So let's start off today with uh, with some free boosters. Also, for those who are predicting, you get to get your points back as well. So let's uh, choose Yep. Win yourself a small amount of channel points, Mubs. And uh, if you don't know how this works, folks, if you don't normally join me for draft-based streams, exclamation point free packs is the best way to explain it. First person to claim the code, should your account be eligible for it, will receive it. I'm going to spice things up tonight, though, and throw in a couple of different codes as well. There'll be some booster packs. There'll be some alternative art collected companies. All kinds of stuff going out as codes you could claim tonight. So there's the first one. Whoever gets their hands on that, enjoy your boosty. Congratulations. We'll get game two, well, match two, I should say, underway and start another prediction off for those folks who like to gamble with those channel points. There you go. Get your bets in, let me know. Will our ridiculous green-white deck crush another soul, or will we be taught who is boss in this particular cube format? It is time to find out. A single channel point says that I will lose. I admire your, your dedication. I bet one point. Proud of you, Mubs. I admire your confidence. We'll see if you have anyone to bet against. One versus one. There's, there's some serious gambling going on right now. Hello there. How are we doing today? Happy holidays. Someone called you're all in. <laughs> I don't believe that's you all in for a second. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Oh, no. How greedy is this hand? Does, does this once upon a time find a land? You have to keep, right? We're on the draw as well. If Once Upon a Time finds a land, we're probably in fine shape with a hand like this. And we have so many lands in our deck, so let's let's go. <laughs> Swamp. Drawing it naturally is acceptable as well. Right, let's cast once upon a time before we do anything else here, because we're going to probably cast this egg. I will take a planes. Cast the egg. Draw ourselves a Gargaroth. Apparently with a very slow start by the looks of it. It looks like they're a big mana deck too, so Rejuvenator about to get to work. I think I'm actually going to skip out on Filigree Familiar so that I can guarantee Solemn Simulacrum. Oh. Bit of lag on my side. I don't think so. I think I need to guarantee I can cast Solemn on four.
Because that way I guarantee a 5 drop on 5, right? And I'm going to grab a green source, even though I drew that Shark Typhoon. Because I have a Gargaroth in my hand. Opponent disfigures my Solemn. Sure. That might change my, my input. It does not. Kind of wanted this uh, Brontodon to blow itself up so I could feel comfortable casting the Immortal Sun, but opponent correctly not doing that. Phyrexian Arena. That's not a bad one. That is a land, as far as I'm concerned. Um, do I prefer Tender Shoot or Gargaroth? I think I prefer Tender Shoot. This arena is going to start being a real problem, though. Opponent will never run out of cards. This Tender Shoot Dryad is also always dead. Yep. No worries. Happy to trade this off for the Rejuvenator. Just want to draw lands from here on out. Lands, lands is everything that I want. Nothing else. Perfect. Okay, so let's think about what we're doing here. So we have seven mana available to us total. I can scoot make a guy in cycle, save the Immortal Sun for next time, or just scoot familiar. I can't I definitely can't play out the Immortal Sun yet because of this Brontodon. So I'm pretty sure I am meant to get scooting. while I have the chance. And I think I'm going with the familiar here to again try and encourage some kind of bronted on pop. Uh, even though that should never happen, it's, it's probably better than like a 2-2 shark or something. Any land that we don't currently have, and we'll start making zombies, which is also ideal. Quad block available? I mean, I don't really want to do that. I think Scoot Swarm is very valuable if the Immortal Sun ever sticks. It's just valuable anyway against someone who's playing Phyrexian Arena. They do have a Red Splash. Interesting. Interesting. Swag Tusk, hell yeah. Love me some Swag Tusk when the opportunity presents itself. Unfortunately, we already have a plane, so that doesn't count. Lands are good draws, though. You reckon I'm on the fence between Gargaroth and just making a uh, 6 6 Shark? Hmm. I guess I could Gargaroth Sword Tooth, right? Yeah, I can do that. I don't think uh, sacrificing Shark Typhoon is the way to go. It might end up being the way to go, but I don't think it's the way to go this turn. This Brontodon is proving to be a problem, though, because we really would like to have gone this Immortal Sun down and just died to really run away with this. Put it on nice, fair, traditional Jund mid-range. Bloodchief thirsts the Gargaroth. Annoying, but yes. That is understandable. That's not bad. 
That's actually very good, right? It's actually, actually just insane. Bonk. I'll attack for six. Glass casket was the stones there. As the only ch oh, like, castable answer to a, a Brontodon that would let us cast the sun this turn. Just gotta hope they don't have another artifact answer, otherwise they both blow up. And yeah. Phylath. Okay. Opponent also capable of going wide. Opponent's opponent starting to, to do their thing. Hopefully our thing is wider and stronger. Unfortunately, I keep drawing lands that I already have, so I'm not making zombies, which does kind of suck. But it's fine. Oh, I have another land drop because of the sword tooth. <laughs> oh, man. Magic's great. Yeah, pretty sure this is just a big ass shark this turn. I will probably use Field of Ruin at some point to make a million more scoots. Seems like a, a valid thing to do as well. <laughs> this deck's great, guys. Deck is fantastic. Opponent will adapt. I find myself not particularly caring. A Mind Stone. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to try and kill him, to be honest. I'm not worried about him dying to his own arena. He's just going to die to me having too many guys in just a second. It's a big old Gearhulk. So let's feel the Ruin. Grab ourselves another land drop. Opponent can Phylath, I really don't care. That's not quite as good a land drop as mine. My land drop is very good. And we make, what, so six, seven, eight? So we make a six, six shark here. Whoop. I love me some Scoot Swarm, boys and girls. Scoot Swarm. Triggers. Arena seems to be struggling. Hopefully it can handle 64 triggers in a moment. Oh no, it's starting to lag. It's starting to lag. Arena. Come on, Arena. There it is. There it is. There we go. No big deal. A 96 scoots. I got a zombie too. I know. Maximum value, right? Yeet. <laughs> Math is for blockers. You figure it out. Oh yeah, the servers are phenomenal. Hilariously, if I'd played one more land this turn, I wouldn't have been allowed to go past the cap anymore. They cap it at 250 tokens now. They never used to. But uh, now, now I can't go past that anymore. Not that it matters. My opponent was very dead. Minus 49. <laughs> Game two. Let's run that back. More shenanigans, please. 
Opponents paid their money. They're allowed to have their fun. Let's not try and deprive them of that. <laughs> yeah, only only slightly overkill. Nothing insane. Still well within the realms of believability, but minor minor overkill. Hopefully game two is equally smooth. is not quite as good. I think this is a mulligan just because I'm never casting these two spells here. So let's let's take them all. Same similar problem to be honest, but at least I can get rid of one of them this time. Scattered Groves it is. Okay, at least we're curving, I guess. Wayward Sawtooth's going to have some lands to put into play. Always thought this was a card that deserved to find more of a home than it did. It made for a hilarious deck with Experimental Frenzy uh, way back when. Yeah, Sawtooth is solid. You really need the right deck for it. Like, it needs to be a deck exactly like this one that really just cares about land drops. Um, otherwise, it's not very good. Fastwood Surge, okay. Opponent also accelerating. Untapped land would actually be quite nice here because it means I could hard cast a Shark Typhoon. Opponent checked that I couldn't block. I can hard cast a Shark Typhoon. Do I want to? Probably not, honestly. It's probably just incorrect. We'll make make ourselves a 4-4. Nah, I'm happy to make the 4-4 and try and uh, ambush the 3-3. Cycle myself towards Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Polukronos. It's kind of annoying, but sure. I don't think so. I think Sawtooth was... Uh, into Untapped Land was fine. Okay, so I will make this 4-4, but I expect my opponent to punch it. Uh, before it blocks. With their, their Polychronos. But that does mean they're not punching the Sawtooth, so... Pros and cons. Yep. Ooh, approach. Alright, well, I know what I'm doing. Let's do this. Shock myself for this. Gain seven life. Off you go. Do not thought seize me. Don't do it. That would be an error. Drawing approach in probably less than that, to be honest. It's only six cards on top of it, and we have a lot of card draw in our deck, so. Gonna take nine. Yep, just feed feed me some fodder to this, this Ugin. That is fine. Happily gonna minus five in just a second. Oh, Ugin. Oh, Ugin. 
Yeah, it's it, the card's pretty messed up, right? It's just, it does some very, very silly things. As you would expect an 8-mana card to do, to be honest, but still. Yeah, Sawtooth played two extra land drops this game. It did, it did some work. Let's never crack this field of ruin. Because that would be silly. Opponent is done playing Magic. 2-0 with this really dumb green-white deck. It is, uh, it's played very, very well so far. The 1v1 battle ends in a yep. Exactly, he's an Elder Dragon, right? He should do some pretty busted stuff. Alright, match three for all the marbles. All of the marbles. I'll give away another code as well, because obviously we keep winning. So let's have an M21 one this time. Brum, 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 brum. There we go. Yeah, I mean, Khan Liberate is good for other reasons, though. Its loyalty is absurd. The minus is significantly uh, cheaper in a lot of cases. Uh, this hand is more than fine. Keep. Oh, it's two channel points this time. Some real, real betting going on. Oh, okay. Opponent looks to be quite aggressive if they're playing Gutter Bones. Try and make our way towards Elder Gargaroth. I think I'm just meant to Paradise Druid here, honestly. Make the orange border about me white as well. I can actually do that, technically. If, if you really want a white border, I can do that. Depends on how desperate you are. <laughs> oh, oh, my Gargaroth. That's rude. That is extremely rude. You would love one. All right, let me see what I can do in a minute. Oh, man. That Blood Chief's Thirst was, was un, not fun. I am sad, Scott. I think I'm just meant to be making a shark here. Yeah, the, the, it's been thirsted a few times. Definitely been thirsted a few times. I also appreciate you, Quaff. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're having a lovely holiday season too. Let's make a 3-3 shark. I'll just draw Marari's Wake for my troubles. Let's block this guard bones. So let's change this for you today. There you go. Opponent gets to look at my hand and, uh, well, they can decide what they want to take. Absolute perfection. There you go. You have you have a white frame to match the snow. <laughs> Takes away Marari's wake. Makes some sense. Really would like to have drawn lands here, to be honest. Gotta crack this egg to cast Lyra Dawnbringer, I think. Boop. Yeah, don't worry, I, I agree. I, I agree with slamming Lyra. That's what we gonna do. Oh, yikes. Phyrexian Obliterator is scary. That one is definitely scary. Scooty Boy Genius. You're gonna need to do some work for me, Scooty. Lyra does race it, but... It's still scary. 
I can also cast Approach next turn, which is also nice. So we never ever block this Obliterator at any point. Just stay as far away from it as humanly possible. Oh, Grey Merchant? That just kills me, right? Oh my god. Dude. Dude. I got Black Devotioned out. Ugh. Oh. Gary. Gary got me good. The old gay merchant of Asphondle showing you who's boss. That was gnarly. Uh, this hand is good, however, so we'll keep this. Hopefully we draw something worth ramping into. How can you redeem these codes? If you go on to Magic Arena, uh, you'll find in the store there's a little redeem code bar in the top corner. And if you're the first person to redeem that code, it will, it will activate for you. Yeah, that one was pretty gnarly. It's not often there's a Phyrexian Obliterator in play when people Grey Merchant you. That was, that was nasty. Real nasty. Alright, Swordtooth, let's play some extra lands. Really would like an untapped land so that I can cast the Immortal Sun. That would be, that would be very nice. Merry Christmas, Witch Doctor! Nice to see you. How are you today? Happy Holidays. It's not bad either, to be fair. Drinking soda? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, thank you. Trying my best to, uh, to have some fun playing some Holiday Cube, having a good time. Nice to see so many people stopping on by. Mr. Mono Black Agra might have been too fast for us, folks. This has been this has been rough. This dude's deck is is pretty fire. Cold time to drop so you can buy more magic cards. That's reasonable. I don't blame you for that. Magic cards are great. I don't think I survived this, unfortunately. Oh god, if I do survive it, it's not by a lot. It is snowing right, yes. I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> Put a little bit of, uh, of extra work in to try and... Oh. Oh, okay. I can't activate this Ugin. Because there's an Immortal Sun in play. Oh no. That's what you call a Nombo. <clears throat> Alright then. Why do I run the Immortal Sun? Because this by itself is a heck of a card that shuts down my opponent's Lilianas. It draws me extra cards every turn. It makes everything cheaper. It makes all my creatures bigger. And there is exactly one Planeswalker in my deck. And unfortunately, I drew it. Ah, it's fine for it to be global. It's actually a bit of a flavor win that it is global. Because, uh... It's meant to be in the story, right? Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Both of these cards are individually powerful enough that I should definitely be playing them. Um... 
Okay, um, would anyone like to explain to me why on God's green earth that tapped my paradise druid? Normally when Autotapper makes the mistake, I can at least rationalize it to some extent. Why? Why? Planes does not make zombie, unfortunately, because we've got a lot of matching lands in play this game. Why would you... I am angry, chat. That is, that is depressing. There's no point in me casting the Ugin. I might as well encourage my opponent to blow up the Immortal Sun if they can. And then figure it out from there. No point flex it. It doesn't flex if I die. Like it is it is not a good flex if I lose the game. <laughs> oh god, that's a Phyrex in a blur, eh? Huh? Oh god, that's an approach with the second sun. So you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there is a chance. Cardboard live? Oh, let me give it a kick. I'll uh, I'll start it back up. I will. Oh, piss off! <laughs> that that is a great merchant of Asphodel. Guess I'll die then. Making a food doesn't save me. I, I will do it to prove a point because it doesn't save me. I go to one, my opponent attacks, and the game ends. I really flexed on my opponent in that game. Wow. <laughs> oh, only two and one with this busted ass green white deck. This deck is really, really good, and we only got a two one out of it because Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Absolutely zero justice.